So here's a little time saver with sketches and work plans. Here's a situation where I want to create a, a rib in here, but I want it offset from the edge. So what I would probably, what your first thought, thought might be is to create a work plan offset. So I clicked and dragged to create that um, offset. So I'll go negative three and then start a sketch on that work plan. So it's kind of a two step process. I'm just going to back this up here. I'm going to do it slightly different. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with the sketch command directly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag to pull that from the edge. So I've clicked and dragged like I did with the work plane, except I'm in the sketch command. And what's going to happen here is it's actually going to generate the work plane and place the sketch on that automatically. So you can see here that um, I was able to, to um, shorten that to, to one step, do the work plane and the sketch at the same time. Let's create a rib here. Let's make this a little bit thicker and I will click OK. So again, created the work plane and created the sketch all with a click and drag. So in this sketching tip here, I'm actually going to throw in three tips for the price of one. First one here is actually a work feature tip. Um, so it's not directly related to sketching, but it's often that you need to create work features to be able to define your sketches. So I want to create a work plane so I can see or work on that hole. And as opposed to creating the axes, then creating the plane, I'm actually going to start the plane command. I'm going to right click and actually do the axes as a sub feature. So I'm going to pick that edge there. I'm going to pick this front face. I'm going to set an angle of zero. So the process is really no different if I would have done this separately. But notice that in the, in the tree here, I end up with my work plane and my axes. So it's able to do that kind of in one flow, kind of one uh, set of operations as opposed to create my axes and then create my plane. Okay, well I'm going to create um, a sketch on here, but I can't really see the geometry, right? Because I'm looking at this, this box here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to use my slice graphics feature. Um, if you like the keyboard, it's F7 to do that. And notice that it's going to go through and actually slice um, the graphics so I can actually see the geometry of my sketch plane. So it uses the sketch plane and chops off everything between me and that sketch plane. Now this does not impact your mass or your volume, and this will not impact your drawing views or your assemblies. This is a sketch only feature. Just to show you that, the minute I click finish sketch, and notice that it goes back again. So I'll go back into my sketch. This time what I'm gonna do is push F7, and we can see that it's now sliced the graphics. Now the last tip here is I'd really like to come in here and project the geometry, um, but there's really maybe not the quite the edges that I wanna use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my, my project geometry drop down. And you might also be asking why didn't it automatically project anything? It's because, you know, there's, there's, I've sliced the graphics here. Um, there's technically no edges here, right? Because my sketch plane intersects kind of the middle of the part. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to project the cut edges here. And by doing so, what it does is it, it projects all the edges that intersect or all the features that intersect with the sketch plane. Now this is parametric. So if I go back and I modify the whole location, let's just take this and, and move that whole location a little bit. What I'll see is that when I go back into my sketch and again, push F7 for slice graphics, we can see that the information has actually been, been updated. Now I'm just going to do something quick here just to use that geometry. So I'm going to use this feature here. So let's finish our sketch. Let's click extrude. Let's do a, a quick cut here in both directions. I'm going to do something like that and I'm going to click OK and we can see that that has been updated. So again, if I go back to my hole here and make a change to its location and I click finish, notice that the geometry is updated. So again, three tips there. Um, I was able to use my work plane to create an axis and then the work plane. Remember F7 to slice the graphics and then if you have intersecting geometry, you can use to project cut geometry. So here I have a sheet metal component and what I'm looking to do is to create some type of cut that goes all the way um, wraps around this, but I actually want to dimension it in location to the flat pattern. Um, so I want this to be cut into the flat pattern and then become part of the fold. Now I could use the unfold feature. So I could use the unfold feature and I could come in here and say, okay, I need to unfold that, that and that, right? So I can define my geometry. This adds a little bit more complexity than I really need. I mean, all I need is those edges to kind of snap to dimension to and create my feature. I don't need to go through this whole process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my, my sketch command. I'm going to pick this face. And whether I pick this, this inside face or outside face doesn't really matter. And on my project geometry command here, I'm actually going to use the project flat pattern. 
So now what I can do, and I just have to make sure I pick on the same side as the sketch. So I want to make sure I pick on the inside because my sketch is on the inside here. But I'm going to pick that flange. I'm going to pick that flange. I'm going to pick that flange. And I'm going to pick the inside face of that hem. So notice that it's gone through and it's projected that geometry. Now the yellow is a little bit harder than the eyes. I, I apologize. But now what I can do is I can come in here and I can define my rectangle. So I want my rectangle um, you know, to look something like that. And I'm actually going to constrain this here. Oops, I guess I should use horizontal. I'm going to constrain this to, to the midpoint. Let's add a dimension here for the width of this. Let's make this uh, one. And let's pull this back here a little bit. Don't know why I jumped. And I'm going to dimension it from this edge. So let's dimension it from that edge at half an inch. And we'll dimension it from this edge also at, uh, let's go quarter inch. Now we have to remember that I am actually working within the, the flat pattern here. I mean, the correction values were applied. So when it projected the flat pattern, it just didn't project it as is. It actually projected what would be the flat pattern. So my K factor or whatever band allowances I've, I've applied will be applied when, when, that, uh, when that tool is used to project that geometry. So now I can click finish. I can do my cut, let's take this, we'll cut across the bends, we'll click OK, and we can see how it's gone through and actually wrap that up. Okay, well now let's go and let's actually create the flat pattern. So we can see it's rolled that out and created that flat pattern. Let's do a, a quick dimension here. So what's the edge from there to there? And we can see it's that same half inch from there. And let's just do a restart on here. And if I click here to there, notice it's a quarter inch. So again, when you use that project flat pattern tool, you are actually projecting the flat pattern, not the actual folded geometry.